So everybody, welcome to another Swing Time video call, and I'm very, very happy to welcome Matt Williams to the show. Matt, Hello. how you doing? Again? I'm good, thank you. How are you? Not too bad, not too. Staying indoors, staying safe. <laughs> yeah, no, even though it's nice outside, uh, yeah, no, just staying in at the minute. Fantastic. So, look, Matt, what I uh, always like to start these interviews off is by finding out about yourself. So how did you get into golf? Um, I got into golf when I was probably about 12 years old. Um, I did BMX racing before and I was, I was quite good sort of uh, in my age range. And I had an accident in 05 and kind of overprotective parents, especially mother, um, kind of said, right, let's gonna do, you're going to do something different. Um, I was always quite competitive and I always went past a driving range when I was very, very young on the way to school. So I thought I'll have a go, have a go at golf. I uh, went to my local golf club. Um, and within sort of 18 months, I was the county champion for my age. So I kind of, at the age of 14, I kind of thought, oh, OK, I'm, I'm not too bad at this. Um, and I always wanted to be as good as I could be. So kept pushing on, pushing on, um, got a scholarship at Bournemouth University. So uh, moved up to Bournemouth from Cornwall uh, when I was 18. Did a year on the university program there and decided to turn pro pretty much straight after the first year. Um, so yeah, turn pro. I did the PJ training, so that was more very valuable experience. Um, did the three year degree and got the coaching badges and everything else, um, which for me was essential to you know, if the playing career didn't quite go to plan, I've got a backup in coaching. Um, Actually, we said this before, that it's a great thing to have the PGA qualification, it, it really, really is. Yeah. Uh, now, with regards to your BMX, I know you, you said you went to the World Championships as well, didn't you? So were you one of these really were you one of these really annoying people at school who just naturally good at every sport? <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> just the very uh, obscure ones that people don't normally do. <laughs> there wasn't much competition, that's why I was so good. <laughs> <laughs> don't say that don't say that you've got, to, no, you've got to take some serious talent to get to the world championships mate <laughs> yeah i mean um I, I was ranked sixth in britain um so i was i was quite handy I've, I've still got you know all the dvds that they used to film all the races for every age category in the nationals and the british champs Brilliant. so i've still got all the videos here from 05 on well i say video dvds on 05 um so I don't watch them at all, but I've got them there. I've still got the racing jersey at my, at my parents' place. Um, so I've still got a few memorabilia bits. But no, I, I did everything in school. You know, football, rugby, cricket. I, I did everything because I was I just enjoyed sport, competition. That was, you know, I lived on a farm. So I was always outside doing something. Um, and, and golf kind of just took, took my fancy, even though I did all those other things at the same time. Um, I just really pursued golf. And, and you must have found out you had a bit of a talent for it then quite quite, quite early on then. Yeah, like I said, when I was an underdog when I won the county championships in, when was that, 2009 for the under-14s in Cornwall. Um, you know, I, I shot the lights out of it, really, to be fair, from, from my handicap at the time and from my age. Um, no one thought that I would have been top three in the gross section. So for me to go out and actually win that, that got me into a number of things and that, that spurred it on for me. Really? Superb, superb. So look, let's talk a little bit more uh, about your career to date, your professional career, shall we say. What's yeah. been a highlight for you? Um, I mean, I've had a, a number of good finishes as a pro, um, done well in some pairs events and, and that sort of thing. Uh, I mean, this year was meant to be my first full year of competing, um, you know, on a bit more of a full-time basis. Uh, previously, I had been working in the pro shop, doing a bit of coaching to help supplement events and mostly yeah. programs. Uh, so, beginning of the year, I went out to Jordan for the Mina Tour qualifying. Um, yeah. I wasn't overly prepared, if I'm honest. I went out there, right. not chancing it, but like I said, during the winter, I've been in the pro shop for 30 hours a week. Um, yeah. So, the, the practice time compared to the guys I was playing against was different level. And yeah. I've played with that sort of, that stand before. I've been to Challenge Tour qualifiers in France. I've I've done everything like that. But you know, you're in the you're in the hotel for the event. You get in the minibus to the golf course. On one side of you, you've got you got well. There were two guys that have won a silver medal at the Open for finishing best amateur. And the other, you know, at the front of the minibus, you got Sebastian Gross, who's played on the European Tour for six years, and he's fully kitted out from Callaway. And all yeah. of a sudden, 
I, I felt very inferior. And that I think mentally that kind of affected me that week. But um, yeah, I mean, I was, I was due to play the full season on Euro Pro this year, which they've cancelled every event. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's cancelled the media. Yeah. Well, they're, well, they're going to try and reschedule some at the end of the year. But right. if that's actually practical, I, I don't know, um, if I'm honest with you. Because obviously the travel things, I don't know what the state of it is out in UAE. But with all the events being out in you know, Dubai, Bahrain, that sort of area, it's a lot of travelling. I, yeah. I don't think they can risk any players getting ill from that. No, no. So when all this does clear out and we do get back to golf, are you looking at some other tools to play? I know the Touch Pro Tour, you've got the 2020 Pro Tour. Yeah, uh, so, yeah, the 2020 stuff I've looked at. Um, obviously, Chris is well well involved with that. And um, it's a little bit further up north, so I'd have to look at possibly doing yeah. like a, a run of events for me, being based in Bournemouth. Um, TP Tour, I play a lot of TP Tour events. Okay. Um, a great one day event, um, generally held at some really good venues. So I'll play majority of them if I can. And um, yeah, like you mentioned, the Clutch Pro Tour doing some really good things as well. So yeah. um, <laughs> I, th I think it's the, the Clutch and the 2020 are really good because they've been started by players. Yeah. Um, so yeah. 2020, Tom Hayward's played numerous tours for many, many years. Yeah. And I think having a player in the management of these events they know exactly what the players want and they know exactly how it should be set up. And when you turn up as a, as a player, you, you get treated like, like a tour pro like you are really. Yes. Um, I, I can safely say that I've interviewed Chris and Adam who founded the 2020 pro tour. In fact, we, we broadcasted the first event yeah. for them and it's, um, the, the feedback has been sensational. Uh, and I know from, from the touch pro tour as well, we're going to do stuff with those guys. They're so well organised, Matt. They, they really, really are. Yeah, you, you can't compete. I mean, dare I say it, I've played a number of pro events in the past and it's literally been like a roll-up. And yeah. you, you're told like, right, everyone's going to get there for 11 and there's probably 25, 30 of you. Um, and it's there's no guaranteed prize funds. There's no incentives of bonuses for frontline, back nine or any associated companies you know if you get a win bonus you win a set of clubs or you get a, you know a load of training aids or whatever like that um and you think Christ, i've just thrown a lot of money in the pot there's no guarantee of anything coming back yeah and it's at least with these guys you know it's, it's all done properly from our end yeah you know you, you pay online it's safely paid you get told before you enter what the prize breakdown is and it just adds that bit of security Yes, so th those guys are doing some really, really good things out there. Um, not that anyone else isn't. It's just you know having the player aspect of the management just adds to it, really. That's good. That's really good to hear. They certainly have caught the eye, haven't they? No, 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 let's, get, let, let's get back to you. And I'm, I'm really sorry to do this, but we do like to have a, a laugh at your expense. Uh, now, there must be a, an embarrassing moment or two in your career today, a moment where you thought, oh, no, I can't believe I did that. You haven't ever shanked it off the first tee, have you? Um, <laughs> she felt that I'm not, I've not shanked it off the first tee. I played, um, played my home pro am first year I turned pro in the PGA. Um, and I was playing with one of the members, quite a wealthy member. Um, and obviously, when you're the home pro and there's a bit of an expectation on you, like I said, it was my first year of being a PJ pro, so I played a couple pro am, but this was my former, there was probably 60 70 members around the first tee anticipating something good. Yeah. And, um, yeah, when you clean top of three with 20 yards off your first tee, it's it's not amazing. Um, so, yeah, from, from that aspect, on the course, that's probably my most embarrassing moment. So, look, Matt, let's, let's, uh, let's go back to the course, shall we? You've obviously played quite a, a number of courses in your pro career, in, well, just in general, I suppose. Yeah. If you, could only, if you could only play one golf course for the rest of your life, where would it be? Out of the courses I've played, I would say it would be the Carrier in Turkey. Nice. Um, yeah, I've been there loads of times. I love it. Um, I've watched the Turkish Open there as well. So, you know, if, I've, I've taken groups over there for like coaching weeks and that. But, um, you know, the carriers, superb. The facilities there are amazing. Staff can't be more helpful. So, um, 
yeah, if I if that was one place I had to go and play for the rest of my days, I would happily go there. Fantastic. That is a good answer, that actually. Answer. Some people even know, or they're like, oh, that's a bit of a think of that. Now, Matt, I'd also like to ask a question because uh, some people watching are equipment junkies, and especially somebody like myself, I'm about 20 to 22 handicapper, so I'm always intrigued to know what the pros play. So, Matt, what is in your bag? Can we start from driver down? Yeah, certainly. So, um, all my kit has been fully fitted out. Uh, my coach deals with all that side of things. So I've got the tailor-made sim driver at the minute. Oh, a new one. A new one. Yeah, yeah, new ones. I got I got a demo head of that in January uh, when I was out in Spain, and I gave it a go. And I thought I went from M5 back into the sim. So I thought, like, okay, it's, it's just a newer model of what I've got. Um, yeah. And it does perform really well. It's much more stable. So um, I've got one of those with an Oban X Flex shaft in it, which is quite an expensive shaft. But again, I'm, I'm quite lucky that my coach covers all of my equipment costs. Um, Same, so I've got that in the driver. Um, then I dropped down to three wood. So I've got a Titleist three wood, the TS3. Um, oh, okay. the, to be fair, at the minute... That's I'm early new as well. TS3 is yeah. early new. Yeah, I mean, most of, my, most of my kit is, I say it's relatively new. It's, it's all current products. So, um, yeah. but yeah, the, the shaft I've got in that... Um, I'm swapping between two at the minute, just trying them out. I've never been, hence my my clean top with a three wood off the first tee scenario. I've never been a huge fan of woods. <laughs> um, I've done everything with, with fairway woods, trying to put a five wood length shaft in a three wood to try and get some control. I've I've done everything. Um, so I'm, I'm I'm still not quite there with a the three wood. I'm not clean topping it anymore, but. Get yourself um, a one iron, Matt. Get yourself a one iron. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm just I'm glancing over there all the time because my bag's there and I've got a, another bag behind it with some uh, odd clubs. And I have got a Mizuno one iron in there, but the shaft isn't suitable anymore. Um, so we go from three when I drop straight down to my irons then. Um, yeah. So I go three iron to pitch and wedge. Um, I'm, if I'm going to change anything when we come out of lockdown, it'll be the irons. Um, just because I want to fight... Not that they're not performing, but I just want something with a slightly thinner top line. So I've oh, got okay. the, um, the TaylorMade P760s at the minute, which are really good. Um, yeah. Very consistent in the way the ball flight comes out. You know, it's, it's, They're very, very good. Um, I've got the... Which ones are they? I can't, I can't even remember what shafts they are. They, all the stickers have been peeled off the shafts. So I don't even know <laughs> what they are. Um Metal they're, they're K, KBS something or other. What, the reason I don't have stickers on my golf shafts is that my coach does something quite unique when he builds them. Um, so right. he has something called a spining machine. So every golf shaft has a spine. Um, and if yeah. you, most manufacturers will just leave the sticker on the shaft. The stickers aren't put on them with the spine in mind. So if you just right. had all the stickers down the back, like most brands do, the spines would all be in different positions, meaning the shaft would perform differently in each club. Oh, interesting. Okay. So yeah. he's got a machine that he puts the shaft on it. It spins the shaft round at some speeds to find where the spine is. And then he puts the spine of the shaft in the exact same place on each club. So that each wow. one should perform differently. So it's just that next level of fitting. That is that is real. That is real. Deta attention to detail, isn't it? Who's it is. your coach? You give him a shout out because that's yeah, incredible. Yeah, so uh, Sinjin McNabb, who's uh, he's based out in Germany, he doesn't. I'm meant to be doing an Instagram live with him tomorrow, but um, I don't know if he's, he's based out in Germany, so I don't know if he's going to be able to do it because they've got quite an extreme lockdown over there. Right. Uh, okay. And he's got some business things to carry out. But, but yeah, he, he's got a great facility out there. Um, I go out there for two, three days at a time. Um, we go through the clubs. We spend some days fitting and, and playing and everything else. He's got all the track mans. He's got two golf courses that we can have use of. Um, so he, he's very, very detailed. Um, so he does that. And the reason we take the stickers off is if we leave, leave the stickers on during that process, all the stickers being random places on the club. And if yeah. I look down at that all the time, and it, it wouldn't change my performance, but visually it just looks a bit odd. It might have a slight impact, you know, on the mental side, I suppose. Yeah, possibly. So we just we just peel the stickers off, and then it's just everything looks the same, and we go from there. And uh, then we go into wedges. So I go down to pitch and wedge in the irons, and then I've got fifty degree, fifty four, and fifty eight in the tailor made mill grind wedges. Oh, the mill grind, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So I've got the original mill grinds, not the mill grind twos at the minute. 
Um, so the, the, is that the one with the, the face that rusts? Is that right? Or the, the, the twos rust. So they came out, I yeah. think they came out like similar time to the driver, probably December, January time, um, if not earlier. And the reason I've got the, the normal ones is that I went out to, no, it's probably earlier than that, probably October, November, they, the new ones came out. And um, I used the normal milk drawings last season. Fine, loved them. They were fine. And then I went out there and Sinchin basically had a load of, of the, the standard heads and stock when the new ones came in. Um, yeah. the, your, your grooves are starting to wear out a bit. Instead of me giving you one of the brand new heads, are you happy to have a new head but of your current model? So I was like, oh, yeah, it's fine. Just pop the head off, put the, put the same shaft in the new head. I've got some fresh grooves. So... Um, I'm still using the old model, but it's a relatively you know, new club, if that makes sense. Um, yeah, fantastic. And the reason I've kept with the same wedges as the irons is that you get the same performance. Yeah. So yeah. I'm even though I've mentioned lots of tailor-made so far, I'm not contracted to tailor-made. Um, I've got no ties with them at all. You know, no brand loyalty or anything like that. It's just that if I've got the irons which perform well, I want the wedges to feel the same as the irons. Yes, that's understandable. So, um, you know, yeah, obviously most club golfers will have, you know, they might have three different wedges in their bag and they're all different brands. Yeah. So I think, you know, even at club golfer level, you should always, if you've got, I don't know, tightless wedges or a tightless wedge, if you were looking to buy more, you should keep it in with what you've already got instead of getting just, yeah. because it looks nice, you just try and keep it in because the feel is quite a big, aspect in short game oh massively yeah i would, I would totally go in for that I'd definitely yeah. go in for that. you've got quite a nice um spread there as well in your wedges. i imagine your gapping's quite on point yeah i've got everything really i mean my pitch wedge goes 140 to 145 um depending on air conditions and that sort of thing so everything from there is gaps i'll try and get a 15 yard gap between each wedge right um okay. from a full swing basis and then i'm very much somebody who likes to feel shots so i often hit sort of i wouldn't say three quarter swings but i limit the length of the swing and i feel it a little bit and i just play to a yardage so um, having th that many wedges in the bag allows me to do that fantastic fantastic and uh, what's your putter then Matt? putter um not many people have heard of this brand before um so it's called adele adele yeah, not the singer. Not the singer. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, it's uh, E G E L. Um, okay. Yeah. So, yeah, not very well known in the UK, um, but they are as premium as a Scotty Cameron, for example. Um, oh, brilliant. Yeah, yeah. The science that's gone into when they produce the putters, I was blown away when I got fitted for it. Um, yeah. Not just the fitting itself, but the way they manufacture the heads and everything else. It, it completely blew my mind. Um, so I've got one of those in the bag at the minute, and yes, yeah, it's, it's really good. Um, I love it. So uh, I certainly recommend people, you know, going away from the norm. Well, not not necessarily going away, but looking to see what what else is out there. What else is out there? Yeah, That's yeah. I mean, there's there's three, what three or four main brands for putters, um, yeah. but there's so many others out there. You know, it's got to look at like Justin Rose. He uses a really weird looking thing. No one's ever heard yeah. of it, um, but he. He's not contracted to them because I can't imagine that's a company that can throw lots and lots of money at him. Yes. But he uses it because he it performs. So exactly, exactly, yeah. exactly. That's well, what that's Matt, good man, good man. I really, uh, really do appreciate your time today. It's been absolutely. Uh, before we go, I always like to ask this question because I think it's important for yourself uh, as well. Throughout your career to date so far, we know about your coach. who's obviously really, really helped you. Is there anybody else, any sponsors, any family members, any other coaches you want to give a shout out to who sort of really helped you get to where you are? Yeah, I mean, um, I've had I've had many sponsors over the last few years. Um, so, I mean, they all know who they are from the past few years and they, they've given me a good helping hand. Um, track employment gave me a really good hand last year. Um but recently, I have to give a big, big shout out to uh, Simon, uh, Simon Noakes at Bespoke Construction. Um, Brilliant. Yeah. Obviously, with the current financial situations that people are facing, um, you know, I, I was in a bit of a situation, and he was he was helping me out before, um, but he he stepped up and did something that 
you know, I didn't ask him to do, I didn't expect him to do, and he's really helped me out a lot during during this tough time with with COVID nineteen. So, um, yeah, big thanks to him, um, and obviously, like I said, all my family and friends as well. They're they're very supportive all the time. So, yeah, I've got I've got a good team around me, very good team around me. Especially uh, especially golf because you'll be away from home, I imagine. Yeah, yeah, away from home, you can see behind. I've got uh, some photos up there. My yeah. little one it was her birthday a little while ago, so we still got some photos up. But uh, uh, but, yeah, yeah, it's, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, it's nice. It's nice to have family. And when I'm away, you know, constant FaceTime and phone calls and stuff like that. So yeah, very supportive family, which is nice. Fantastic. Well, look, Matt Williams, I'll let you get back to your family now. This is plenty more time before we get back out on a call. It's been a real yeah. pleasure, Matt, to find out about you and, and golf and, you know, where you're going with it, where you're taking it, where you've been. It's been real, uh, real insight and valuable. So thank you so much for your time today. No, Stay safe, And I'll see you on the call soon, yeah? Definitely. Thank you very much.